I helped clean out a garage over the weekend and rescued a variety of useful items from being thrown away. While I was cleaning out the garage, I realized I had everything I needed to build myself a primitive forge. In this video, I'll be building the forge from some of the junk I collected. A car wheel will serve as the firebox, the railing will be used to make the legs, and the propane bottles will be used to make a pipe to attach the leaf blower. I begin by breaking down the railing into its constituent pieces. I had a total of two pieces of railing, which has enough material for three legs. With all the pieces broken down, I evened everything up with a four and a half inch cutoff wheel. Once all the pieces were cut to size, I could begin prepping for welding with the grinder. To set the job up for welding, I spaced a pair of saw horses about six inches apart and clamped a piece of bar stock behind the wheel to prevent it from moving. A second piece of bar stock is clamped at the opposite end on the underside of the sawhorses. The position of this bar is determined by how far apart I wanted the legs. And by the legs I mean the legs of the forge. Finally the leg is placed on a protruding ridge of the wheel and held in place with a welding magnet prior to tack welding. The welding rod I'm using here is 16th inch 70 14. Once the first leg had been tacked into place, I did a bit of head scratching to try to figure out where to place the remaining legs. A tape measure wasn't going to help here, but some basic geometry would. I laid out a roughly equilateral triangle and marked where the remaining two legs would go. This project doesn't require precision measurement, so I just laid everything out by eye and tweaked it till it looked right to me. When I knew where everything would go, I prepped the surfaces and tack welded the remaining legs into place. Here I am tacking the final leg into place. I found that using the rudimentary fixture with the two pieces of bar stock worked pretty well to locate the legs in the right spot. All I had to do was line it up with my marks and the edge of the lip and it was good to go. After checking to see that the legs were where I wanted them, I filled everything in with more weld. Now that the forge was standing on its own, it was a good time to start fabricating the blower pipe. The empty propane bottles I picked up were just about the right size for the pipe. The basic plan was to weld two propane tanks together and then attach it to the wheel with some kind of a bracket. Before cutting into the tanks, it's a good idea to remove the check valve to make sure there's no propane left in the tank. This can be done by making a simple extraction tool to remove the valve. The valve extraction tool that I made consists of a screwdriver with a slot mill in the end. Anything can be used here, but since I have a screwdriver from my garage junk haul, that's what I used. After a bit more cutting and grinding, the tool was ready to use. Insert firmly so it grabs the valve and unscrew. Voila! With the tanks empty, I could continue the fabrication process. I used a vise to hold the tank in place while I cut the tops and bottoms off. Once the cut was started, I rotated the tank until the cut was complete. I was able to get a surprisingly clean cut using this method. If you're going to try something similar, I recommend leaving some of the curved top on one of the tanks. You'll see why in a bit. After cleaning and prepping the propane tanks, I used a similar setup to before to hold them in place. The sawhorses and slabs of bar stock make an excellent portable welding table. I'm using 7014 electrode again since that's what I have on hand, though 6013 may have been a better choice for this job since these tanks are pretty thin. Things went well at first, but then I let the puddle get a bit too hot and my travel speed was too slow and blew through the material in a couple places. Luckily, no big deal. Those little holes aren't going to make much of a difference in performance. After doing a test fit of the pipe, I discovered it was a bit larger than the hole, so I decided I would cut some slots in the top of the pipe so I could bend them into place and taper it down a bit. This is why it would have been better to leave more of the curved part in place when I initially sliced off the top. After I completed this process, it did fit nicely, but this probably could have been avoided in the first place. Next, I fabricated some L brackets using some of the leftover material from the railing. As it turns out, I only needed one bracket. 
The brackets will be bolted on using the existing hole pattern on the wheels. I lined everything up by eye, then marked where the holes would go. I center punched the hole, then step drilled up to a quarter inch to fit the hardware I was going to use. With the first hole in place, I eyeballed where I wanted the hole for the pipe to go and repeated the step drilling process. With the second hole drilled, I reattached the bracket to the forge and used a piece of duct tape to hold it in place while I marked the location of the hole with my drill. With the hole drilled, I bolted the bracket to the pipe and reattached it to the forge. With the blower pipe assembly completed, I could finish off the legs. I decided to use the scroll work from the railing to add a bit of stability and some visual flair to the forge. This was perfect because I could use the remaining pieces of flat and square stock for other projects. After I figured out where I wanted the piece to go, I marked off the spot and then prepped the area with a grinding wheel. I was on a roll with the duct tape, so I set up the job the same way here too. I'm actually surprised how well this worked out. Anyway, I did some tack weld first, then repeated the process for the remaining two legs. For the last leg brace, I used some of the off cuts from the first two scrolls to fabricate a new piece of scroll work. With everything in place, I did some cleanup with the grinder and filled things in with a few more passes of 3 seconds inch 6011. The forge was just about ready to use. I only needed to get the blower hooked up. I first tested things out using a 90 degree elbow. Next, I decided to add an ash trap to prevent any bits of fallen ash from being kicked back out once the blower was turned on again. The trap was fabricated using a 16 ounce propane bottle and a two inch collar made from a cut off piece of the blower pipe. It's connected to the forge using a PVC T connector. Now I know PVC isn't the best choice for this application, but so far I haven't run into any issues with it getting too hot and things starting to sag or deform. At some point I may fabricate a tea from another propane bottle, but I'm just going to leave things as is for now. To prevent hot coals from falling down the pipe, I added some grate made from some scraps of expanded metal. To plug up the holes in the wheel, I spread some lava rocks on the inside of the wheel. I've never heard of lava rocks being used like this before, and they'll eventually melt down and become unusable. But I've used the forge a few times now, and they do seem to help retain some of the heat, and they're holding up well enough for my purposes. And that's how I built my simple forge. I started out with a rough idea based on materials I had on hand, and pretty much winged it the entire way. If you're looking to do something similar, and maybe you don't have uh, an old wheel or the exact materials I used, don't worry. Just check your garage, see if you have something that might be useful. All you really need is a, a vessel of some sort to, to hold the fire and then some way to attach a blower. One thing I see out for the trash frequently is gas grills and I think one of those would make an excellent little forge since it's already got a built-in stand and wheels so you could wheel it around your backyard or your workshop. I've already done the first bit of blacksmithing on my little forge and I just put a taper on this bar stock so it does work and I do plan on using it a bit more in the coming weeks before the, before the snow comes. And uh, yeah, so hope you enjoyed this video and got something out of it. I'd like to hear your ideas for a uh, similar project so leave a comment down below. As always, subscribe for more hacks and builds. See you next time. Oh yeah, and here's my first bit of blacksmithing. See you next time. Cheers.